When we said earlier we'd be getting some national perspective on this news, and indeed we start that now. We're glad to welcome in Pete Thamel from Yahoo Sports. Pete, uh, what was your take on this news and the press conference we just heard? You, you know, Mike, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's probably a pretty fair result. Uh, you're, you're certainly going to hear a, a lot of divisive reaction uh, from, from both sides, people who think it was too light on Urban Meyer and, and also people who, uh, you know, who, people who think he should have been, he should have been reinstated. But I, I really think it was, uh, from, you know, following this case very closely for the past three weeks, I think it was a very thorough investigation. I feel like the, you know, the, the people who were put in charge of it were, were unbiased and, and really, quite frankly, grilled a lot of the people involved in Ohio State football and who knew the life and activities of, of, of Zach Smith. And there's no perfect way for the university to thread the needle here and make everyone happy. But I, I, I walked into today uh, at Ohio State feeling like the university had to do something. Uh, just the, the ugly headlines that came from Zach Smith, both the allegations of domestic abuse and obviously the other extracurricular things that uh, – that have come up since those allegations arose, there, there was certainly the, the sense that there was some negligence administratively and in part of the football program on not noticing those things and rectifying them quicker. But at the same time, you know, was were the transgressions and were what the, the investigators found enough to, to fire Urban Meyer? And, and, and I think they found a, a medium that I feel like is fair. Was there anything you didn't have answered from that press conference that you wanted to have answered? I, I don't think so. I, I do think Meyer taking questions was something that I was surprised at, quite frankly. I thought, you know, usually you go to these things and they're pretty tight and they're controlled and they're, you know, just prepared statements and, and, and people move on from uh, and people move on from there. So. I thought that was a, a, a good bit of transparency, and, and I really felt like the report was uh, was was fairly transparent. When you uh, when you when you take a look at you know the amount of text messages and emails that uh, Mary Jo White and her crew looked at, and uh, you know obviously the investigation led by Joanne Davidson who has an impeccable reputation, as I learned this last week in the in the state of Ohio. So you're not Mike going to satisfy everyone in this, but. I feel like any notion from the outside that this was a whitewash is just sort of like foolish Twitter talk. Uh, you know, just from speaking to the last two weeks of people who were directly involved in this investigation, like I really feel like this was a, this was a thorough a, a thorough process that came with a fair result. Pete, what do you make of the fact that the meeting began at 9 a.m. and there was no announcement until 9 p.m. Eastern time? You know, I think the lawyers always win, Mike, you know, and <laughs> you, you have to you have to understand that, like the findings and the executive summary, some of that stuff was probably meted out today. You, you, you have a lot of very high profile people, be it a president, an athletic director, and obviously, a, you know, football coach makes seven million dollars a year. They all have to sit down and, and, and do their statements. I have no idea. I would love to read the oral history of what happened those 12 hours inside the building that I stood outside of for most of the day today. But, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I think we'll get some glimpses of what happened as, as the weeks go on. But I, I'm as curious as you are because it, it was a very long time um, for, for, for this to come. Pete, let me end this with a big picture one for you. How does this suspension and the press conference Wednesday evening affect how Urban Meyer is perceived? Boy, that's a, that's a tough one. It's, it's clearly a, a blow to his reputation. I mean, the, the last three weeks have been a, a huge blow to Ohio State University, the Ohio State football program. There's, uh, there's no question. Urban Meyer is a very prideful guy, and he's always operated with a, like a very clear sense of, uh, of black and white. And I obviously haven't spoken to him, but I, I know this is gonna this is gonna hurt. You know, this is this is something that he's gonna carry with him forever. And uh, you know, he's someone who is always prided himself as someone who, you know, follows rules and follows laws. And, and, and this is this is clearly a, a reputational hit that that is going to that is going to pierce him personally. Always appreciate appreciate the insight from Pete Thamel of Yahoo Sports. Thanks for your time, Pete. Hey, thank you, Mike.